everyone, welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and watching another video. So in today's video, I wanna talk about digital minimalism. And there's really two parts to digital minimalism. The first part is setting healthy boundaries with the digital devices in your life. And the second part is how to functionally use digital devices to your advantage as a minimalist. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the second part of that, how I approach my digital devices, how I organize things as a minimalist. I do have a lot of thoughts though on the first part of that, so setting healthy boundaries with digital devices. So if you all are interested, leave me a comment down below, let me know, and I can certainly make a video on that as well. But in today's video, I'm gonna share with you some of the ways that I use technology that's in alignment with my minimalist principles and also just my goal of being a more organized person. And I'll share some of the apps and tricks that helped me in my digital minimalist life. So with all that said, let's get started. So I wanna start by just sharing with you what devices I have and what I use them for. So I have two digital devices. I have a 12 inch MacBook Air, and I use that primarily for work and for editing, but also maybe watching movies or Netflix from time to time as well. I like that the MacBook Air is small and light and compact and travels really easily. And even in my home office setup, sometimes I don't like to be sitting at my desk. Sometimes I like to move around the house, sit on the floor, sit on the couch, sit wherever I want. So I really like having a small portable laptop for that. The only thing that I might add to this setup sometime in the very near future is a second portable monitor. And I'm thinking, you know, like a very small monitor that you can pack down really easily only because I'm in a lot of meetings lately and I like to have the people's faces on one screen and be able to do work and take notes on the other screen at the same time. So that is a limitation with the setup that I currently have and something that I might be adding in the future. And in addition to my MacBook, I also have an iPhone X. And I use that for all the normal things that people use phones for, you know, I text, I take pictures, I get directions, you know, all the phone things. But in addition, it is an important tool as part of my work as well. I sometimes do editing on my phone. I do a lot of social media as part of my day job. So I'm constantly in apps like Lightroom and Canva. I'm cropping photos. I need to be able to check my email, see my meeting notes. So it also is an important tool in my job as well. And that's it. I don't own a tablet. I don't have a TV. I just have these two digital devices and that's really intentional. As a minimalist, I don't want a lot of extraneous things, especially when it comes to digital devices because so much is digital these days that it can be hard to organize yourself. So laptop and a phone, all I need. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what my goals are when it comes to digital minimalism and the things that I want. So first and foremost, I want the least amount of paper clutter in my life. I feel like paper clutter is insidious. It can pile up really, really quickly. And I do have an entire video that goes through how to eliminate paper clutter in your life. So I'll link that down below. So if you want some more detail on how I organize things, some tips and tricks for reducing paper clutter, check out that video first. But for the purposes of this video, I did want to mention three apps that I use to help me reduce the paper clutter in my life. The first is Adobe Scan. This is a completely free app and I cannot say enough good things about how easy this is to use. You download the app to your phone and the way you scan in any document is the same way you would take a picture with your phone. So you can hold the document underneath the camera of the phone and it'll scan it in as a readable and searchable PDF. And then it's super easy from there to share that PDF out to any cloud storage or any device that you want. So I personally, once I scan something in, will share it with my Google Drive, which brings me to my next very important app in the elimination of paper clutter in my digital minimalist life, which is Google Drive. So there's a lot of different cloud solutions out there and they all have pros and cons to them, but I personally like Google Drive and I like that I can sync that directly with other apps that I use like Adobe Scan. And the third app that I use that is integral to reducing paper clutter in my life is Evernote. I I'm a note taker. It's just how my brain works. It helps me digest the information better. It helps me remember the information better. And honestly, it reduces stress for me. I know that if I take really good notes in a meeting, it'll help me produce better work moving forward. So I use the note taking app Evernote. They do have a free version of this. And what's great about it is I can access Evernote either 
on my phone or on my desktop, as well as anywhere that has an internet connection. So I never have to feel like I'm without the security blanket of my notes for work should I need them. And what I like about using an app that's specifically designed for note taking versus like just creating a cloud Word doc and saving it on my Google Drive is that there's a lot of helpful features to the app that are specific for note taking. So for instance, you can really easily tag all of your notes with certain keywords to keep them organized. You can capture a lot more than just text. You can attach photos, you can attach files, you can create to-do lists very easily. And it has a really powerful search. You can search within PDFs that might be within a note. You can search within handwriting that might be within a note. It's just a lot more powerful of a tool than just creating Word documents, which was what I used to do. So those are sort of my top three apps to reduce the paper clutter. But I want to dig a little bit more deeply into Google Drive. I think one of the most important things you can do on your path to digital minimalism is choose a singular cloud solution that is your number one for all things. What can become really overwhelming in your digital life, in your digital space, is having too many things that are serving a similar purpose. So just like we can clutter our physical space with things and that can cause sort of chaos in our mental space, if we have too many things in our digital space, that can also feel cluttered and that can also feel overwhelming. So what I encourage you to do is find one cloud solution. So before I organized and decluttered my minimalist life, I had files on Dropbox, I had files on Google Drive, I had files in the Apple cloud storage solution. There was just files all over the place. I put my photos one place, I put my work stuff one place, I put personal stuff another place. Things were automatically syncing to some other places like you see how this can feel really chaotic really quickly. So if nothing else, research and find yourself a cloud solution, a singular one that you can use for everything. So for me, I went with Google Drive. So I have two terabytes of Google Drive storage and it's $9.99 a month, but I also have a lot of files. With all the video work that I do, with all the photo work that I do, I just need a lot of storage. So just know that there are much cheaper solutions and free solutions for Google Drive and other things that don't cost anything. I just happen to need a lot of storage. So if at all possible, I encourage you to just consolidate everything in one place. It's gonna save you a lot of time and energy trying to remember what your organization is across each one of those cloud storage solutions that you might have. And it will keep you from having to store things locally on a computer where it's not backed up. That said, I do back up my Google Drive once a year. So in addition to the Google Drive, I do have an external hard drive that also is a backup and a copy of everything that's on my Google Drive. The next thing that's super important to me when it comes to my digital life is the ability for things to be shared across devices. Part of this is the job that I do, part of this is just my personality, but I want to have access to things kind of at all times because you never know when something's going to come up and you never know when you're going to need a file or a piece of information. So I specifically chose solutions that allow me to access things on my phone via any internet connection or my laptop. There's nothing that only lives in one place, there's nothing that is only accessed from a certain device. And not only is that important to me just from an access point of view, but it's also gonna help with organization. So it's less likely that you'll end up in a situation where you're like, oh yes, I do have that file, but did I save that to that computer that was at work? Did I save that to my home computer? Did I save that on my tablet? Where did I save that? If you're saving things in a way that allows you to access it from multiple devices, it doesn't really matter what device you save it on because it's all in a centralized place. And that includes for me things like my calendar and my email as well. I have two email accounts. I can access them both from my laptop and from my phone. And I use Apple Calendar, so that allows me if I add an event to my calendar on my laptop, it's going to show up automatically on my phone and vice versa. The next thing that I want as a digital minimalist is a clear desktop and not a lot of icons in my dock. So I recently tried a few new things when it comes to organizing my desktop. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen that story where I created an organization system for my desktop. But there was a really important learning coming out of that, which is I just don't really like anything on my desktop. I thought perhaps it might be easier for me to have working files on my desktop, things that I'm working on all day long, and then transfer them all to Google Drive at the end of the day, make sure they're up there. But I did that for like two or three days and I was like, I don't like this. 
this is not fun. I don't, there's too much stuff on my desktop. I don't like it. So I quit that and went back to having a completely clear desktop. It honestly ended up being less work because I, then I'm not taking the time to have to put things in the right spot on my desktop to make that feel clean and clutter free. And I was having to keep track of what had been put on the drive and what hadn't been put on the drive versus if I take a file to work on locally, I work on it, save it back to the drive, put it in the trash. Way easier than trying to keep track of the organization system that I tried to make work on my desktop. So for me, a clean, clear desktop just makes me feel a little bit less overwhelmed, a little less cluttered, and a little bit more organized. And then same thing with the dock on my computer. I don't like to keep a lot of programs on my dock, only the things that I access every single day. So when I sit down at my desk to start a work day, usually I'll go down and need to open all of these apps because these are all things that I'll use every single day. My calendar, Spotify, a messaging app that I use, Canva, my email, my notes app. These are all things that I'm gonna have open most of the day. I find it really overwhelming to have a lot of apps down in my dock, so I really try and limit the number that's there. And then same thing with my phone screen. When I open my phone, it's a blank screen. So I've moved all the apps on my phone to either the second or third screen, mostly because I find myself very easily distracted when I open my phone. If I open my phone and all of my apps are there, typically I'm gonna get distracted by another app, do a different thing than maybe what I intended to do by opening my phone. It happens to me all the time. But I found that having my first screen completely blank keeps me really on task with, okay, I open my phone, blank screen, take a second, think about why I'm here, and then find that app. Versus if I open my phone and all the apps are there, I'm gonna be like, oh, what's the weather today? And let me scroll Instagram for a second. It just helps me be a little bit more organized and stay focused. I have a similar approach to my email inbox as well. So I don't really subscribe to the inbox zero idea where at the end of the day, you end up with zero emails in your inbox. That just is not a possibility for me in the way that my life works and my work works. I just, that's not gonna happen for me. But I do treat my email inbox as a to-do list. So if I receive an email and there's an action required from that email, which could even just be, a personal email that requires a response, it's gonna stay in my inbox till I've completed that thing. Once the action is completed, I will put it in a correspondent completed folder, or if it's something like an online order or a confirmation, I have a separate email folder for that as well. So this is gonna help me keep my inbox manageable so it doesn't get out of control, but it's never zero. I mean, I guess maybe once in a while it's zero, but usually I have a couple to-do items in there at all times. And some to-do items just can't be done in a single day. Like it'll stay in there for a week or maybe two weeks until I get to it. The next thing I do as a digital minimalist is remove photos from my phone. I don't want my phone to serve as the archive for every photo that I've ever taken. One, because my phone doesn't have enough storage for that. But also two, I just can't organize it in the way that I want to so that it's easily accessible. And three, like I said at the beginning of this video, I want everything in one place. I don't want all of my recent photos that I've taken in the last year or four years or five years on my phone, but then all the photos from the rest of my life living somewhere else. I want my photos in one spot. That just helps with my mental clutter. It helps with my organization. And the other part of this that honestly creates an extra step for me, but it's completely worth it, is I don't want my photos to automatically sync anywhere. And this might not be for everyone. I get that a lot of people want their photos to automatically sync because if something were to happen with their phone, they would have a backup of their photos. Completely get that. But for me, and I know a lot of people do this, but I'm gonna take a picture of something. I'll take the picture like six or seven times, or maybe 10 or 15 times. I don't need all of those photos syncing to my cloud somewhere. That's gonna just be a complete disaster. I'm gonna end up with hundreds of thousands of photos that I don't need. I would rather go through my phone once a month, delete any photos that I don't want, don't need, or duplicates of another photo, and then transfer any photos that I want to keep and archive to my Google Drive. And I know that sounds kind of like a lot of work, but honestly, at the end of the month, it takes me maybe 10 minutes to go through all the photos on my phone, delete anything that I don't want, and then transfer maybe the five, 10, or 15 keepers that I have from that month. So I end up with a carefully curated collection of really good photos that I know I wanna save. And then the last important piece of my digital minimalist life are passwords. So I'll be totally honest here, I have an app on my phone that stores all of my passwords, but the research I did to choose that app, I did 
a long time ago, several years ago at this point. So I'm not gonna recommend a certain app only because I'm sure that there's newer, more secure, better apps. And I don't wanna give you bad advice on this one, but my advice would be to store all your passwords in one place. And this is just a habit, just a muscle that needs to be built over time. I think that there's a lot of overwhelm that stems with the fact like, I have so many passwords, I can't keep track of them. I can never remember them. But find yourself a secure app that allows you to keep all of your passwords in one place and access them from several different places. And then I've just gotten in the habit of every time I create some sort of online account, immediately going to my app, opening it up, creating a new record with that password in it. It's just a secure way for me to keep my passwords in an accessible place. It's easy to update, it's easy to keep track of. All right, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this helpful. I hope it gave you some ideas of how to reduce your digital clutter, how to reduce the overwhelm that comes with your digital space and your online space. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in a comment down below. I'm happy to answer anything that I can. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. You can follow me over on Instagram if you wanna see what I'm up to on a day-to-day -day basis. Otherwise, I will see you here next Tuesday. Bye everyone. Record. No, oh my God, cut. Hair update. Tiny pony is growing. I'm not sure how to explain it. Okay. Oh, this sweater was maybe overkill. Where should we start? <laughs> that wasn't good. Well, I don't know. No, put it all in one place. Who wants paper platter? I don't want that shit. Cut.